I think one thing I want you to know about me, if you see me as a guide in your money and wealth journey, is that everything I talk about and teach, I've implemented myself and know my tactics work. I'm Louisa Wilcox, Sen Mum from the world of finance, made redundant during COVID-19, giving me the push to take the leap into this crazy entrepreneurial world. Co-director of Rock Solid Accounting UK Limited and founder of Let's Get Wealthy. I'm sharing my knowledge with you to help you understand money, wealth and business. It wasn't that long ago I was, quite honestly, not even living paycheck to paycheck. I didn't have the clarity and confidence to change my habits. Fast forward past lots of learning curves and you will see that I'm creating a life that I love whilst changing lives, but also giving me the freedom that I never thought was possible. A qualified bookkeeper and an inclusive money mentor for neurodiverse entrepreneurs, I created this Let's Get Wealthy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you are an entrepreneur who wants to stop hiding from your bank balance and numbers, creating a life that you love, your wealthy life, you are in the right place, friend. So let's get started. Real quick. I have some extremely exciting news for you. My self-study course, Mastering Your Money, a step-by-step guide is back and I have a special offer for you. Use code MYM100 by the end of this month and you will save £100 off the already low investment price of £147. Yes, that means you get the step-by-step training for just £47. You really will not find the step-by-step actionable type of money training anywhere else for this price created in easy simple actionable steps made in a way where you can step in and out of the training to avoid overwhelm make sure you grab this deal now by the end of the training you will know exactly how to look after your finances it's the most simplest training out there quickly grab it as at 7 p.m at the end of the month this code will expire so go to www.louisawilcox.co.uk forward slash mastering money and use code MYM100 to enroll now. You won't regret it. Hi and welcome back. I wanted to talk to you this week about financial freedom because it really is one of the most important and crucial things that you can do to not only better your own life but actually to better the world around you. And when we have the options, the choices and the flexibility and we're not worrying about where our next paycheck is coming from, and you're not in debt with anyone else, and you're not wondering where that hard-earned money has gone, you really do become the best version of yourself. And you're going to get rid of the stress, the overwhelm and the worry, and the sleepless nights are going to become a thing of the past. And you'll then be able to actually use your money for all those things you're desperate to do. So like donating to charity, helping loved ones with their money, creating generational wealth for your children. You know, the list can be endless, but actually the impact can be huge. But you really need to look after your own finances first. You need to actually make sure you put on your own oxygen mask before you can help someone else. And it's so important that we do manage our money and we actually know how to look after it. You know, we're not taught financial literacy at school, but actually it's really crucial for us to really grow um, our future wealth, to be able to retire and to be able to live life how we really want to be living it. But where do you start? It's great when we see these things, when we see these posts and these blog posts, but actually where do you start? And there's a few key ways. So the first way is really know where your financial position is. What's your money doing? How is it working for you? It's like looking at your um, your accounts and seeing where it's all going and if there's any leaks that you need to get rid of. The next step will be creating a conscious spending plan. And that's a budget, but I prefer conscious spending plan because it's about knowing how your money's working for you, where it's going, and being consciously aware of what it's doing. Now, what it's not um, you know, the reason I don't say budget is because people go, oh, budget's really restrictive. A conscious spending plan should not be restrictive. It's about enjoying life and actually using money in a way that you want to be using it and not spending on the things that you don't realise you're spending it on. Um, I've worked with quite a few people this year. And more often than not, on our first initial conversation before they start working with me one to one, they will say, 
I don't spend my money and I go, that's great. I'm going to have a look. I'll do an audit on your accounts and we will see where it's going. And then all of a sudden, when I show them where their money's going, they're really surprised because they didn't realize they were spending in the areas that they were and actually as much as they were as well. And that's completely normal and there's no judgment for this because we all do it. I've done it myself many times. You know, at the end of the day, we're living life. It happens. Things happen. But it's about knowing how to get back in control and get back on top of your finances. If you have some debt, you really need to make sure you're creating a repayment plan so you're paying down that debt. If you have emergency funds, you know, if you've got thousands of pounds in emergency funds and actually you could use that to clear off debt, I would consider doing that. And then the money you're paying off the debt, whack it straight into your emergency funds, especially if you are paying high interest on credit cards, potentially loans as well. Look at getting rid of that because otherwise you are literally throwing money away. And once you've done that, and you know where your money's going, you've got your plan, you want to then be looking at future wealth. This is your investments and your savings. And that is absolutely crucial. It's so important we invest. And women do not invest anywhere near as much as men. Um, and it's so, so important we do invest. You do not need to pay someone to invest for you. You can do it yourself. Uh, come and work with me and I will show you how to do it. We'll work together to create a plan or you can get resources online. There are books out there. Educate yourself so that actually you start growing your wealth. Because Actually, as we get older, those are going to be the key things that make a huge difference to our retirement and our children as well. Our children's children, if you have children, um, if they have children. Um, but the way we want to be enjoying life, because I don't know about you, I do not want to be working until I'm in my 70s and 80s. And the way we get over that is actually by looking after our money, growing our wealth, but still enjoying the now as well. You know, in all my other podcast episodes, I say how important it is that actually we look after our mental and our physical health. But we still need to factor in the investing and the saving side in that too. But the thing about debt, do not feel guilty if you have debt. At the end of the day, you cannot change the past and you should never be judged or feel guilty or have shame over any kind of debt you have. Because actually, more often than not, we actually sometimes get into debt to actually move our life forwards. For example, if you've got a mortgage, that's actually a type of debt, but then when you've paid it off, you've got an asset. So there are different types of debt and sometimes in life, Things happen and actually we do need to dip into those credit cards and that, especially when we are building our emergency funds and our savings. But that's why it's crucial you have a plan, a conscious spending plan, so you can actually start growing those, um, the savings pots and the emergency fund pots so you don't have to dip into them. But it does take time. I was talking to someone earlier and it's surprising. Uh, well, I hear this all the time, but she was saying to me how she um, was actually speaking to someone to help her with things like um, life insurance and critical illness insurance. And actually, she needed to get on top of her finances. Now, this is someone who is running successful businesses, um, turning over nearly seven figures um, every single year, but she's still not on top of her money. And this is normal. Um, but what I didn't like to hear was that actually someone she had spoken to and she thought she was going to get help from was actually making her feel ashamed over money and that then knocked her confidence so she and she wasn't then going into control and actually didn't want to then look at her numbers and this is the problem with what we sometimes see in the online space and when we talk to people and this is why I'm creating open money conversations because you should never feel judged over your finances never feel judged over your situation because you can get on top of it your today is not your tomorrow is one of my favorite phrases I always say and what that means is you can change your life and actually things do change sometimes quite drastically and can happen quite quickly one of my one-to-one -one clients that um I've been working with, we've been looking at paying down her debt and actually making sure that she gets into a better situation. And something we did was actually look at her services. And actually, we've reshaped her services, we've drawn them back up, we've created new ideas, different offers, and actually some higher rated services. And she went out and she put some offers out. And within an hour, she had two people book in on the higher offer. And now she can go and actually look at paying down some more debt. And actually for her, in the next year, her financial situation is going to change so quickly with these new services. 
because she's put the action in, she's putting the time in to actually change them. So you, things do change really, really quickly. You just need to take the action, action and be strategic about it as well. So never feel ashamed um, and always know that your situation can change. So never, ever worry about that. Um, now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some things because obviously we're near the end of the year. So what can we do to really think about for our money goals for 2024? Because before we go into 2024, it's really important that we actually reflect on this year and we reflect at how the year has gone because 365 days, a lot happens in that time. I know personally, so much has changed in my life. Um, you know, back in January, my son stopped walking and he needed a double hip reconstruction. He was off school with me from May until September. And I spent my summer with him in hospital. And that meant that actually I couldn't, all of the plans I had made for my business kind of went out the window and I couldn't work, obviously, because he was my top priority. I merged my accounting business with someone else. And actually, we've grown that really well together. But it did take a few months and actually... Just a few months, well, we've been together about four or five months now. And the time that we've been together, business has changed drastically to the point we're actually employing someone at the beginning of the year. We certainly didn't think we were going to be in that situation. My money mentoring business, I've been pushing it and pushing it. And actually, I've worked with some wonderful entrepreneurs this year. And actually, my visibility and being known is getting out there. And even this podcast that you're listening to, I only started this at the beginning of the year. And now I've got tons of people listening to it. And I have people coming up to me and going, I know who you are. I absolutely love your podcast. I love listening to it. Even people I went to school with and my sister went to school with are listening to my podcast. And that is just crazy. Life can really change in a whole year. So really make sure you are actually reflecting back on your year. Um, so you know what's happened and what's gone well and also what hasn't gone well. Because it's important we look at both of them. So you really think about what goals did you achieve? What goals didn't you achieve? Because it's okay. You can move them on to 2024. And actually, if you didn't achieve them, did you really want them in the first place? So really think about that. And then where could there be room for improvement? So really think about these things, write them down, um, embrace the wins and actually learn from the setbacks and then get ready to start again in the new year. But obviously we still have time this year. So don't forget to keep going as well. And make sure if you have a partner, really talk to your partner about money. It's really important that you are on a save, save, sorry, the same wavelength and we're having these open money conversations. So make sure in the new year you have some time in to have a heart to heart and you start talking about it. What do you want to do next year? Where do you want to go on holiday? Are you saving for something? Do you want an extension on the house or do you want to move? So make sure you sit down and you actually create some financial goals together for yourself and your family. Check your savings. Make sure you've got that emergency fund set up. You want to make sure you have at least three to six months worth of living expenses saved up. This is going to give you the financial freedom so that you can make choices that you want to. If you're in employment, these emergency funds will mean that if you want to change job, you can without having to stress about how the bills are going to get paid. It may be that you want to consider self-employment. This emergency fund is going to mean you can do that because you're going to have the security to actually be able to give up your job and go into that role. If your boiler breaks, the emergency funds are there for you to replace your boiler. You're probably getting the point now. And consider actually moving some more money into your investments and actually your savings as well. And make sure you've got um, what's called a high yield savings account. So it's a high interest rate savings account. Don't just let your money sit in a bank because actually in a bank account, because you're not going to be getting anything back for it. At the very least, put it in a savings account, but really consider some kind of investment. Um, make sure you're using your yearly ISA allowance. And if you can, even maybe look at some bonds. Create a savings plan for any big expenses next year. Make sure you know what's going on. If you know you've got weddings coming up, if you know you want to do a big trip, make sure you are actually have a proper savings plan so you are saving up for these things. So you're not actually worrying about the money, where it's coming from. You're not then having to dip into a credit card or even considering a loan. So be really organized with that. And actually... No matter your age, it's really important you look at um, your retirement. Have you got a retirement pot and are you paying into it? 
I actually started my retirement pot when I was 18. I was very fortunate because I worked in the bank. So I was quite um, knowledgeable about that. I was very equipped and I had the people around me to do that. The younger you can start a retirement pot, the better. And you can have a private pot as well, um, actually a pension pot. And, you know, if you are a little bit older, then actually really start looking at that. And maybe you might want to start trying to put as much as you can into that ready for when you're at that point of retirement. So make sure that, you are really knowing where they are. And if you've moved from one job to another, don't forget you do have the workplace pension and you can actually amalgamate those and put them into one pot so they're not all over the place. So make sure you have a look at that. Another one is really look, if you have it, at your debt. I know this can be really hard because none of us want to look at it, but at the end of the day, you need to know where you stand. Celebrate your wins. And if it's long term, um, if you've got to pay it off over the long term, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that you have a plan for it and that you are paying it off. And actually pat yourself on the back for what you're doing and actually that you're paying it off and you're getting there because that's great. You're changing a financial situation for the better. And that's absolutely amazing. Do not feel ashamed of your situation. Many, many people have debt. Nearly everyone has debt or some kind of debt, whether it's a mortgage, a loan, credit card. You know, everyone has it. Nobody talks about it. So pat yourself on the back for the fact you have a plan and you're paying it off, but know your financial situation. And again, if you are in employment, maybe consider speaking, if you can, if you're in a situation, speak to your employer about possibly having a pay rise in the new year. You know, prices are increasing, electricity is going up again. See if there is anything they can do to help if they are willing to give a pay rise. Can you look at getting a promotion? And then obviously, if you can afford it, is there anything next year that you really want to look at giving into? Are there any charities? Are there any local things that you want to um, actually give some donations to? Because it's a time to really be thinking about this. And it may be that you can't do it at the beginning of the year, but maybe by Christmas 2024, that's part of your goal that you want to be able to donate to a certain charity. If you can't do this and you need to be paying off your own debt first, again, remember, you need to put on your own ox um, oxygen mask first before you put someone else's on. You need to make sure you look after your own finances first before you can help someone else. But if you are in a situation where you can do that, really sit and consider what it is that you want to be giving to next year. So actually you're doing it with intention um, and it's not just off the whim and actually know exactly how much that you actually want to be giving. And these are a really great way of actually starting to shape your next year, but actually really reflecting back on this year as well so that you know actually um, how it's being and where you're going so that you're in a really good financial place. And pat yourself on the back for everything you've done this year. Because all across the board, it has actually been quite a tough year in a, for a lot of people in many ways, and especially financials. But you've made it and you're doing amazing. So really feel proud of yourself for where you are. And if you have dreams, go for them. Because if you don't take that first step, you're never going to get there. So many people hold themselves back because they're scared of taking that step. But actually... It's better to try and not succeed than not try at all. And actually, I was actually reading something, um, reading something this week, and I come across a quote which I absolutely love. And this is from um, Teddy Roosevelt: "If we are to fail, at least we fail while daring greatly, which is a more admirable fate than that of those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat." And I think it's very, very true. At least go ahead and give it a go because the worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to work. And then at the end of 2024, you can reflect again and see how it's gone. The only thing I don't like about that quote is the fail because I don't actually think you ever really truly fail. I think you just learn how not to do something or you know, then learn that it didn't work. So never worry about that. It's all a learning curve. And I want to leave you with this because this has meant this um, quote for me, again, has actually meant quite a lot for me over the years. Tough times never last, but tough people do. So keep going. You've got this. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. And I'll be back with you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Get Wealthy. I absolutely love from hearing from you all. If you enjoyed today's episode and my previous episodes, 
please take a moment to leave me a review on whatever platform it is that you're listening from because your feedback means the world to me and it actually helps others discover this show as well. I'd absolutely love it if you could be one of the small minority that actually subscribes. So please make sure you click that button so you're never missing an episode. And until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the world of wealth with me. Thank you for being on this journey.